Today we're going to have the opportunity to look at our uh, disposable kit for inserting an interference screw uh, for really any graft in which you have a bone plug, most commonly your bone, patellar tendon bone graft, but certainly it would work for an Achilles bone plug or a quadriceps uh, bone graft. As you can see here, this is the kit. It comes with two things. One, your notcher slash dilator, and then here, uh, your insertable trocar tip wire. A couple of important features to show about this, which is what makes it easy, and we'll show this here in the niche shortly. You can see your guide here uh, allows you to insert parallel and collinear to your bone plug. You'll see there's a notch mark here at about 20, so it allows you to be sure that you've docked that about the depth of a 20 millimeter bone plug here. Your trocar tip wire will go through your dilator, uh, so it remains collinear. And as you can see here, there's a mark at the back of the pin there. Um, that mark will be flush with the back of your driver when the pin is a centimeter beyond the tip of your, your, your dilator. So the advantage of that is it makes sure that the trocar tip of the wire is engaged in the bone about a centimeter distal to or beyond your dilator. So the pin will maintain its position with the trocar tip. So this is a right knee joint here. Just to show you, we've already prepared for sake of time our anatomic tunnels. You can see here is our anatomic femoral tunnel and then our standard tibial tunnel that's been centered appropriately there. So at this point we can shuttle in our patel bone patellar tendon bone graft. It's important when you shuttle this plug in that you pay attention not just to pulling in the plug but also to the orientation of your plug. So as you see it's going to make its way into the knee joint here. We tend to want to use a probe or something to orient the bone plug to minimize our chance of laceration of the soft tissue. So here we'll rotate that in. This is a small knee. So as you can see there, we're pulling that in. And again, we're orienting, as you can see here importantly, the bone part of the, of the plug, anterior and superior. The, the tendinous portion, posterior and inferior in a flexed position, this now creates the safest interface for our interference screw to be placed here, anterosuperior. So we're now introducing our dilator in. You can see here the important step is to reproduce some collinearity. It looks like that's a pretty collinear angle here. You can see it's important to place the dilator so you're half on and half out of your tunnel or right next to your tunnel so it's creating its own channel uh, just adjacent to the socket. So in this position now, we can mallet this in. Again, you'll see the pre-marking there. That gives us that 20 millimeter mark, which is there. Now we're able to advance the trocar tip wire. We want to advance that in from the back. And the nice thing again here is that we know when that bottoms out, we're about a centimeter shy from being from the back of the handle. So in that position, we slide in the wire driver and we'll advance that in. About a centimeter to maintain its position. What's nice then is that the wire should stay in and the dilator comes out. That maintains the orientation of our wire to advance the screw. Again, we can advance that in, being very comfortable that we're on the right side of the bone plug. We're safe. So if you look here, our wire is advanced, our screw is on the safe side of the bone plug. In this case, we're using a peak screw which can be put in without tapping, or a metal screw. If your preference is to perform a biocomposite fixation, then you can simply advance the tap initially over the wire and then re-advance your screw. So as you can see there, we're getting a nice bite. We have confidence that we're following the wire. And again, on the safe side of the bone plug, that actually allows us to avoid the need for a graft protector, which gives us good visualization as the screw advances here, staying collinear. I think you can appreciate or hear that good bite that we're getting as we advance the screw right up to the aperture. Somewhere here, as we get close to about uh, all the way down, is a reasonable time to remove your guide wire. Uh, but again, uh, we eliminate some of that concern because we know it's really only been advanced eight to 10 millimeters uh, beyond the end of that dilator. So as you can see there, when we're comfortable that we're fixed and collinear with the notch, we can then remove the screwdriver and you get this kind of a nice view where you can see you're on the safe side of the graft. We had marked that purple interface. 
uh, we have nice interference aperture fixation, and then at this step, the wire can simply be removed. You can see here now as we cycle, you can appreciate your fixation. We pull hard on the graft to make sure we're fixed, and then in flexion and extension, we can appreciate the position of our graft here. No evidence of impingement on the notch and full extension. Uh, no evidence of impingement on the PCL and deeper flexion. And here, this collinear position. If you have any concern, it's not unreasonable to sometimes view directly from your medial portal, and you can appreciate your nice collinearity with your tendon interface. So again, a nice technique with a dilator and guide wire to reproducibly uh, place an interference screw of any variety in a collinear fashion uh, without a graft protector. So a, a reproducible method for doing that through this technique.